When I first came into Islam in the early days, there was a situation that I found myself no home, no clothes, no job, no way to move forward, except very limited, very, very squeezing it. I needed desperately to make some money, and a brother came to me and he said, look, I have a job that we can do and make $100 a day each. And I said, really? He said, yeah, and it's right over here in Wichita. Now, I'd lived in Wichita Falls, Texas, and we used to call it Wichita. We take off. He said, uh, I've got the road map. I'll figure it out. Just go this way, go that way. I said, we're not going the right way. You're heading us up on 35. We need to turn and go up 287 and get up to Wichita Falls that way. It's, it's not that far. We can just go over there. He's like, no, 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 no. I know what we're doing. I know where we're going. I said, all right. But by the time we hit Oklahoma, I said, I'm sure there's a problem here because you're going into Oklahoma. Now, <laughs> this is not the right way. He said, yeah, and then he showed me on the map, and I looked at it, and I said, that's Wichita, Kansas. He said, yeah, yeah, that's it. It's not that far. I said, oh, man, <laughs> are you serious? This old bus ain't going to make it up there. It's got muffler problems. It's got manifold problems. It's got a lot of problems with it. He's like, oh, come on, we can do it. So we drove up there. When we come back down, things started to change. Going up, it had been cold. But all of a sudden, it started getting hot. I don't know where the heat came from. It didn't last long, but long enough, because when it started heating up that manifold and heating up the exhaust system on there, it started firing straight out because the muffler system had pulled away. And the block of the motor was shooting fire, a stream of fire out every time the, the pistons hit. It boiled the oil, and there was no oil left in the motor. So there was a rod that w broke. You know, the rods hold the pistons, they go like this. And it broke and came out the side, and when it did, the oil came out. And that's what caught fire first, was the oil coming out of that thing. And so what it meant was that any gas come in front of that thing, boom, and that's exactly what happened. I went under the hood, and I already burnt my hands up on the hood trying to get it up. And I'm beating on that fire, trying to put it out with that blanket. And I'm thinking, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. Why is this happening to me? When I grabbed the fire extinguisher, I was think, thinking to myself, the one thing I did right when I bought this fire extinguisher two years ago, you know, that was smart. Yeah, grab it out of there, pulled the pin out, squeeze that, the trigger, you know. And I'm thinking, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. Why is this happening to me? And when I got the fire out, then I realized I'm in the middle of nowhere. I need to get to a truck stop or someplace. Then it started snowing. I tried to get a ride back into town. Nobody, even the one on the junkyard, wouldn't help. He told me to go out to the roadside and get a ride. No, hardly anybody out there. I'm standing in the cold uh, trying to get a ride. And the trucks are going by. And when they go by, uh, uh, I'm like, Gah. A lady is the one who slowed down first to give me a ride. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that, you know. Then she also thought about well, a guy wearing a dress. You know, that looks kind of funny. <laughs> I dressed like this back then. I even had the imama or, you know, the turban on. And <laughs> when the guys did pull over, they're in a little bitty truck. They said, jump in. And I said, how? There's no room in there. They said, in the back. And here I am now back in with bags of fertilizer. Imagine that. Uh, hog fertilizer, by the way. Oops. Oh, yeah. It's not bad enough. It's like, no way. When I get up to the interstate, I ask them, they just take me through the other side. Let me get out over there at least, you know. They're like, no, we got to go this way. And so when they drove away, I was thinking right then, what am I doing wrong? I came into a slam, and I thought, when I get to Islam, this is the right way, so God, he should, like, you know, help me out here. Why am I in this shape? But it came out of my mind. This is not your deal. This is his deal. You said you want it. This is it. Take a deep breath. <sighs> he got up on the side of the road and started trying to get one of the trucks to pull over and give me a ride. Nothing. And now it really started getting colder and windy, and the snow is getting worse. You know what happened? A red car, a Lamborghini, 
came over the top of the hill. Now I'm standing out on the side of the road freezing to death in clothes that don't fit with holes in them. And here comes a big Lamborghini coming up big red. Oh, I love red cars. Coming over the top of that hill. And I thought, oh, brother. And when it passed me, it stopped. I went, uh-oh. What's wrong with this story? He started backing up real fast. And I said, oh, okay, guy's going to run over me, you know? I said, get back out of the way. I don't know what this guy's doing. And he got up even with me, rolled the window down. Now I'm thinking in Texas in the old days, we would have said, hey, buddy, you tired of walking? Yeah. Okay, run a while. It'd take off. I figure he's going to pull a joke on me, something like that. Instead, he said, can you help me? I'm going, that's probably the funniest story I've heard today. You need help from me? <laughs> but I had to be serious, so I said, <clears throat> yeah, what can I do for you? He said, do you mind a ride with me? Because I can't keep my eyes open. I don't know what's happened to me, but I just feel like I'm going to fall asleep. He said, I don't know if I'm even driving straight. I've got to get down to Canton, Texas. Well, I know exactly where it is. I said, sure, yeah, why not? I got in the car with him. And he said, but I need you to talk. Talk to me. Keep me awake. I said, what do you want to talk about? He said, anything. Talk about anything. I said, like what? He said, well, let's start with why you're standing on the side of the road and smell like <laughs> fertilizer. I said, yeah, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> so over the course of the next half hour, 45 minutes, I began to explain to him the story of how I got into Islam and how I wound up being on the side of the road there. And when we got to Denton, Texas, this is split there. Highway 35 splits to W, West, and East, E. And you can take your choice. Now, he needs to go to Canton, which is to the East. I, on the other hand, need to go to Fort Worth, which is to the West. So when we got there, I was thinking, okay, now i got to get out here. It's a truck stop. I'll see if I can get a, a much better chance of getting a ride here. Then he said to me, do you suppose it would be all right? Would you accept if I could just you know, take you to your destination, because I'd like to hear the rest of that story. I said, excuse me just a second, let me see if my schedule would permit that. Yes, I do have an opening. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> well, I was thinking, I can't believe this guy. This is too much. I said, oh, yeah, okay. So we went on. We went to Fort Worth. And over the course, I was able to finish the story, tell him exactly what had happened, transpired, brought me to the point where I was. And look at what he said. He said, do you know, in my religion, he told me what branch Christianity was in. He said, it is split, it's divided up, there's a lot of problems, and I've lost all my faith in it. But what you said gives me a lot of faith. Huh? He said, this gives me a lot of inspiration. The way you overcome these things. I said, I didn't really. I'm just trusting him, and he makes things happen. He said, I'd like to know so much more. I was a brand new Muslim in those days, very brand new. So I didn't have a, a preparation. I didn't have anything with me to give him, nothing, no cards, no websites in those days. What can I give him? So when we got to the destination, we got out of the car, went in, I found some pamphlets. I gave him a couple pamphlets, Human Rights in Islam, The Concept of God. Those two main ones that helped me so much when I came in. And do you know, subhanAllah, after he took those, he promised me, he said, I'm going to read these and see what I can do. But this sounds like my way. And he drove off. He didn't any more than drive away. Then the brothers who owned the house showed up and they said, oh, you're back. I said, oh, I wish you would go catch this guy. Uh, you need to tell him about Islam. I don't know how to tell him. And they said, well, I don't know what we would have done any different. And that was the minute that I decided my life has to be dedicated to be able to communicate this message to people in the English language. That inspired me to do what I do today. That keeps me going, knowing there are other people out there who are a lot worse shape, don't have a clue. They need to know what our purpose in life really is. To worship our creator, not what he created, and it will change everything.